name's Karen Ran. I'm a visual artist working as a freelance artist for the Baltic. On Sundays we run meet and make normally when the building's open. When we're organising the activities it's normally around one of the exhibitions and um, Animalesque is still on at the moment. It's available as, uh, uh, online as well and it's around different artists interpretations of animals and my particular thing what I'm going to show you today is how to make a, a, a leaping or a flying or a flitting animal like um, a bat, strange moving animals like a seahorse or a more traditional leaping frog. So um, first off is the materials that you will need. Some A4 paper, cardboard boxes as many as you're going to make animals, cereal packets will do, doesn't matter what's printed on the outside. Um, pencils, felt tips, colouring pencils, if you've got a few that's great. Um, some glue sticks or PVA or any kind of glue. Scissors, preferably children's scissors if you've got them. Um, a hole punch is very very handy. If you don't have a hole punch don't worry. Something from the kitchen like a skewer or from a toolbox like a screwdriver is great too but just adults keep an eye on those. Oh and most important you're going to need, if you've got a sewing box elastic from the sewing box is really really handy. Don't worry if you haven't Elastic bands will do. Elastic bands and string. With these we can make bouncing animals. So once you've gathered all the materials that you need, the next thing is to think about what animals you're going to make. If you wanted some ideas, what I've done is some templates of some of the animals that you see here. I'm just going to hold them very very still for you because for the tech savvy you might have um, the opportunity to do a screen grab and then print them out. So I'm just thinking if I hold them still. But when I'm running the sessions in the Baltic, what I love is the fact that I see how you interpret my ideas and then I can play with the ideas and together we come up with something much much better and so I'm missing all that today instead you've just got me so um, so there's my four templates but what I would love you to do is think about what kind of animal you're going to use um, and how it moves and how you want to show that um, so if you want to draw one freehand uh, that's brilliant and I'm going to draw one freehand for you now. If you're not using one of the templates um, that you've printed off then you've got to draw your own shape. I'm going to draw a really really simple snake. So let's give it a curly tail and a bit of a mouth. Right you might think the next thing to do is to cut that out. Well Actually, you can make things a little bit quicker if you get your cardboard box that you're using, cereal packet, whatever kind of packaging, doesn't really matter, get it opened out, like that, and then with the glue you're going to stick it on, but don't stick it onto the clean side, much better to stick it straight onto the mucky side and then you're going to have a nice side to put collage on as well. So the first thing to do is to get your Pritt stick or your glue, your PVA and just get a good, good coverage like that. I should have asked you to check that your bit of cardboard is bigger than your animal. I think Oh, that's going to fit on. That's okay. So get them stuck down, and then you're cutting both at the same time. So, as I said, this is sort of based loosely on artists' 
the work in the animalesque exhibition. So they were all responding to ideas about animals that um, come from, you know, how animals communicate, what they look like, and there were chimeras. So some, with something like the chimeras, if you had a look at um, Matt Fleming's video also on the Baltic Creates um, from a few weeks ago, he was also responding to that exhibition. I'm cutting these out really roughly at the moment. I would expect you're going to be in a lot neater than me, but just wanted to do this really for speed. You get the idea you've cut out before, I'm sure. A bit trickier always getting into the, the spiral of a snake. I'm nearly there now. Here we go. Last bit. Don't be put off by a left-handed using scissors as well. Right, okay, so there. Um, now, if we were in the Baltic, I would be tidying up after you. I'm afraid you'll have to do that yourselves. And there we go. Um, I'm going to put some just some very, very quick felt tip onto this. We're going to have some spotty, we're going to have a spotty snake. There we go, some green spots. Uh, green, I'm going to do some red. Again, you know, I'm just going really, really quickly because, you know, it's just to show you the idea. What, you're, what you create will be so much better than what I do. So on one side you could do colouring pencils, felt tips, whatever. And then the other, because you do need them to be two-sided. If you've got, say, some wrapping paper, tissue papers, um, you can do that lovely thing where you scrunch up, you scrunch up and stick on like that um, and get lots of spots that way. Or I'm just for speed just now, I think I'm going to do complete spot like that. So I'm just going to quickly draw around him so I know roughly how much of that I'm going to take quickly cut that out and then I've got a background so there we have it so cut round and we've got a little bit of basic and then we can go adding more spots on and look what I found here I think that would be great as a tongue so let's just that's gonna help a little bit so there we have our animal ready for the elastic. So now you've made an animal, you've got your felt tip and your collage on. The next thing is to get it leaping. So just running back to the dolphin here, um, if you make a hole here, then it's kind of swimming along. If you want it diving, if you make the hole further back, gravity is gonna get that position when it ends up. And alternatively, if you want it leaping out of the water, if you make a hole nearer the head. So that's the first thing, is thinking about where you're going to make your hole. I'm going to make my hole here. I've made my hole here. Um, as I say, a hole punch is really, really good. It's probably the best thing, because then you've got a nice big hole. If you're using something else, you might need to sort of wiggle it around a bit so you've got a nice big hole. And then if you're lucky and you've got some elastic to hand, that's the easiest, the simplest. Um, you might want to think about, you know, once you've got three or four of these made, doing some experiments, which leaps the highest, which bounces the most, because different shapes, honestly, they do do different things. So um, just when you're tying them off to objects, make sure you're not, you're, going to, you're not going to pull furniture over or anything like that. So how does this snake leap? Like that. So if you don't have the elastic, what you can do is loop elastic bands together with a bit of string and that's going to give you the same kind of bounciness. If um, young people, you might have to teach adults how they um, loop bands together. It's the same as the loom bands, you know, you just, you can sort of knot one into the next one. 
and then when you've got a run of about four or five of those then you just tie it off to your bit of string. So I'm Karen Ran and that was my meet and make. <laughs>